of 8th July 2021, 23 persons had been recorded to be in severe condition with 11 patients in critical condition. Between the 4th and 8th of July, however, active cases moved from 1,849 to 2,247, indicating a 398 increase in active cases. Some COVID patients reporting at the Greater Accra Regional Hospital are showing up with unusual symptoms. That's according to head of the COVID centre there, Dr. Emmanuel Ahiangle, who told me that in an interview recorded earlier. This afternoon we are focusing on the COVID situation in the country because the Ghana Medical Association Hospital situation in the country because the Ghana Medical Association is warning that ICUs in major hospitals public hospitals are getting filled. Currently, the Greater Accra Regional Hospital, which has a total of 16 beds at the ICU, eight of them are already full, are occupied. I'm here with head of the COVID Centre, Dr. Emmanuel Ahiamble, who will be telling us what the situation is right now. Doc, uh, I'm grateful that you're talking to us. Uh, what's the situation right now? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Asha. Uh, for the past three weeks or so, uh, we've seen the increase. Th there's increase in numbers of positive cases on admissions at our um, uh, ICU, intensive care unit. So the situation, uh, I won't say it's bad, but the numbers are going up. Yes. So currently we have, uh, like you said, uh, eight patients in our COVID ICU out of 16 beds. And uh, they range between severe to moderate cases. Uh, when they say severe case, it means the person requires uh, oxygen therapy. Uh, about two of them are not on oxygen currently, uh, and they may be discharged maybe uh, tomorrow or next. So the cases are going up again, it's true. Mm. And right now, we just saw that some people were brought in here. Yes. Does that increase the numbers? Uh, we were having five patients before these new uh, cases were brought. So three more cases have been brought uh, this afternoon. They were tested yesterday. The results came today. So when you add the three to the five who are already there, we are going to have uh, eight patients currently. Out of them, two of them are pregnant women. Okay. After the positive. Mm. So um, there's no critical case yet? For now, we don't have critical case. Okay. Uh -huh. Where, show me around. Where is the this this so, is supposed to be the holding center? Yes, right? this used to be the holding where we kept those who were suspected. But for now, it has been turned to the testing area. Those who come walk in, those who come during daytime have symptoms, and they go there they test. Those are not an admission, okay. so it has been converted to a testing area. Mm. Uh, the holding area ward is now at this side which has eight beds, but currently the eight beds are filled. Okay. That means we have eight suspected cases who have been tested awaiting their results. Mm. So we have eight beds for holding, which is already filled. And then the ICU has 60 beds, like I said earlier. Mm. Currently we have eight, so about half uh, full. No, we, have, we, we have got eight more beds to be filled. So that's the situation on the ground now. Mm. Let's talk about the, the kind of that people are showing. Are they different from the ones that we saw previously in the first and second waves? Yes, interestingly, those who have been admitted now, when they present to the emergency or the hospital, they don't, they didn't, they don't look so uh, sick, have the classical symptoms of coughing, difficulty breathing, sore throat, fever like we used to see first. This time they can come with any presentation, like a stroke or a pregnant woman who has come with fever, just like any person come to the hospital. So now the index of suspicion among the clinicians are going up. So when they realize that uh, your symptoms are a little bit strange, because it's now, it's now not characteristics of the previous one, 
the fever, the sore throat, the cough. Some of them are not even coughing at all. So it makes this one a little bit difficult to detect. Uh, like I said earlier, they may complain of maybe mild headache, my nose is congested and I can't smell, or they don't feel well, dinner and well. But there's no uh, coughing like before. Uh, there's no uh, shortness of breath like before. So this time the symptoms are a little bit different from the previous one. So you may not detect it early. Yes. For, for those who have been hospitalized, for instance, um, do you find out whether they've been vaccinated or how many of them have been vaccinated, how many of them haven't taken their, their jabs yet? And what are the symptoms they're showing? Uh, is the vaccination helping in any way? Surprisingly, those who have been admitted here yeah, and those who, the two who passed, they have not been vaccinated. No, they have not vaccinated. And those who are here now, uh, the three who are just who are now coming, I haven't interviewed them, but the rest, uh, five, uh, majority of them have not been vaccinated. Okay. Yes. Wow. So it shows that those who are vaccinated will get the milder symptoms in case uh, they get uh, tested positive. So those who are here, majority of them have not been uh, vaccinated yet. So on a daily basis, uh, today I've seen three people. The day has not ended yet. Yes. On a daily basis, how many positive cases do you get? I mean, since the last three weeks. Uh, fortunately, we do the PCR tests at our hospital. We use the gene expert machine to do the PCR. Uh, and from the laboratory, medical laboratory scientists, uh, approximately three to four patients uh, test positive. The samples they receive, the inpatient, about three to four patients test positive, averagely. And the results we received today, yeah, four people, they out of the 20, out of, I think, uh, 26, 31 samples they sent. Uh, six are still pending, though, but four are positive, mm. including yeah. one one day case. Do we have children among the people that you've admitted? For now, we don't have children, but we have pregnant women, two pregnant women. And do we have anybody uh, under oxygen? Yes, uh, I said two are not on oxygen. Out of the five who are here initially, three are on oxygen. Okay. And the other three they are bringing uh, one had just come and she is on oxygen. So we are waiting for the other two to come. Mm. So it means only two are not on oxygen for now. Okay. So Doc, they are the moderate type. Doc, you have 16 beds in total. Right yes. now you have about 11 of them being occupied or you said three of them are dead? Yes, we have uh, 16 beds and currently eight of them are occupied. Okay, plus the new cases? No, including the new cases. Including the new yes. cases? Yes, there were five before, then they brought three now, so eight cases. But, but how dangerous is the situation, looking at what is happening here? Uh, I wouldn't say it's dangerous yet. What I would say is that you should be cautious. Uh, given the fact that uh, many of us, or many of Ghanaians, have not been vaccinated. So, like I said earlier, those who are here, majority of them have not been vaccinated. So, it means that we have to scale up as a country the vaccination you know, uh, uh, process so that many more people will be vaccinated. That will prevent many more people get testing positive.